I'm talking um, about developing mathematics teaching in relation to two research projects that I've been engaged in in Norway, um, in which we've been working in what we call co-learning inquiry mode in a collaboration between teachers and didacticians. Didacticians being members of a group in Mathematik Didaktik to put mathematics education into Norwegian. So, developing mathematics teaching, what is this about? Well, um, it's developing mathematics teaching for the better learning of mathematics um, and initial questions about how to go about that. Um, our conceptualization is in terms of inquiry communities. Um, inquiry communities of teachers and didacticians exploring together and evaluating possibilities for classrooms and students. And this is really the basic grounding of the two projects that we have in Norway at the moment. And we talk about inquiry in three layers or levels. Inquiry in classroom mathematics with pupils and teachers working together on mathematics in inquiry ways. Inquiry in planning and designing for the classroom. So teachers and didacticians with them planning, inquiring into the planning and designing of classroom activity. And then thirdly, in researching the developmental process. So in what ways are we developing through our inquiry activity at these levels? And we see research as both studying development, studying the developmental process, and also as promoting development. The research in which we engage, um, thinking of, of ourselves as teachers and didacticians, both as researchers, then that engagement in research or in inquiry, whichever way we look at it, um, is promoting the development that we're seeking to study. So the two projects um, that I'm referring to are called Learning Communities in Mathematics, that is now in its fourth year of four, and Teaching Better Mathematics, which is in its first year of four. So having said that we want to work in inquiry ways in inquiry communities, what actually are the theoretical roots for something that we're calling community of inquiry? And we've gone to the work of Lane and Wenger and conceptualized this in terms of community of practice. And I think it's important that we, we are seeing community of practice as a lens, rather than saying that um, the uh, community of inquiry is a community of practice, we're looking at ways in which the theory of community of practice can fit or make sense or uh, illuminate for us what it is that we're doing or trying to do. So seeing community as a group of people, identifiable by who they are in terms of how they relate to each other, their common activities, ways of thinking, beliefs and values. And taking from Wenger the definition of the concept of practice, it connotes doing, but not just doing in and of itself. It's doing in a historical and social context that gives structure and meaning to what we do. Uh, in this sense, practice is always social practice. So within this theoretical lens, um, we're thinking of learning as participation, and again, taking from Wenger, the notion of belonging. Belonging to or participating in a community of practice. And according to Wenger, this involves three things, engagement, imagination, and alignment. As an example, in the LCM project, we might see teachers and didacticians engaging in practices in workshops and school settings and aligning themselves with existing or emerging practices related to the particular settings that they're working in. And imagination contributes to emergence of new modes of practice. Now, this notion of emergence of new modes of practice is central to our thinking about development in these projects. We think of identity 
um, as being in ways of being. Um, individual group identity refers to ways of being in communities to which we belong, with knowing related to doing in practice. Um, it's easy to make statements like that, but what actually does all of that mean? Uh, and there isn't a lot of time here today to go into it. But for example, um, in the LTM project, we have, um, we're working with teachers in eight schools, and there's a teacher team in each school. So the teacher team within a particular school has identity related to their school as a social system and group of people. There are ways of being within the school and within the group or groups of people that constitute the school. Any individual teacher or didactician has identity related to their participation in the project particularly. So the project community has participants who are teachers or didacticians. And as the project uh, happens over time, then people develop identity with relation to the project. But of course, uh, those identities are con constituted relative to the many other communities of which the individual is a part. So, so far I've talked about um, seeing learning as participation um, in communities of practice, and I'll come back to inquiry shortly. But if we're seeing learning as participation, then what is teaching? Because I started off by saying this is about developing teaching. So in terms of learning as participation, how do we conceptualize teaching? Here's a quote from Jean Lave, which I'll leave you to read. about the crucial ways in which learning is fundamental to participation and all participants in social practice. And then coming back up, teaching is neither necessary nor sufficient to produce learning. And she talks about the socio-cultural categories that divide teachers from learners. I think we're all well aware of what that includes. But let's think about mathematics. What does it mean to learn mathematics through participation in social practice? Well, if we think about doing mathematics, we would probably come to some sort of agreement on um, these constituents, if you like, of doing mathematics, engaging in mathematical activity, mathematical thinking, mathematical reasoning, generalization, abstraction, and proof. Um, if um, engaging or participating in a community where one is learning mathematics involves doing some or all of those things, then where and how do we do? Where are the opportunities for learning through participation, um, engaging with all those aspects of doing mathematics? From um, a Vygotskyan perspective, we might see engagement with mathematics and learning mathematics to require engagement with scientific concepts. These are concepts that we don't necessarily need through our just everyday, ordinary existence. And quoting Schmidt or referring to Davidoff, um, he claims that scientific concepts re uh, require pedagogical mediation for their appropriation. And I rather like that, because pedagogical mediation, what is it if it isn't teaching? So this raises questions about, if we're talking about learning through participation, um, we want the kind of participation that will enable all of the things that I have here in the list to the left. Um, and there are problems about teaching with regard to learning by participation. How do we make sense of all of this? So here is Lave again, 